What's up everyone? I'm Ken from the Kicker Tech Force. I'm here with Aaron Surratt from our research and development team here at the Kicker World Headquarters. Today we're going to talk about our KS tweeter pods. Aaron, what's going on? What do we have on the table here for us? Uh, what we have here is a almost full range solution uh, to get the sound up on your dash, nice and wide, nice and high, so you can have a good sound stage that's easy to control and easy to achieve good sound with. Okay, why would somebody want the sound up high on their dash? just because that's a better solution for you versus having that sound come down from the doors where your leg gets in front of it. These give you the opportunity to mount them up high and on access to the listener so that you don't have any phase issues, any reflections, or any of the typical issues that you have when you install speakers in vehicles. So what we have here is a, I believe it's a two and a half inch mid-range and a one inch tweeter, is that correct? Correct. Okay, um, and if we look at the output of this, I see two pair of speaker wires, a gray positive and negative, a black positive and negative, uh, what's, why, why would we want that? Well, they're color coded so that they could match up here with this passive crossover network that comes with it, which is gonna give you an 18 dB per octave high pass for your tweeter, a six dB per octave low pass for your mid range, and it's sleek and small. You can just slide this bad boy right behind the A pillar. It's not gonna be hard to mount, zip tie it in to lock it in place somewhere, put your A pillar back on and you're good to go. We also have these two wires available, so if you do want to bypass this, you can use crossovers that are built into your amplifier and by amp. So if you want to use uh, maybe a higher end DSP system, have um, separate EQ adjustments for the mid-range and the tweeter, separate gain adjustments or volume adjustments, you can dial that in if you have separate controls, separate inputs for that tweeter and that mid-range. Correct. Okay. That gives you a lot more control, like you said, separate gain adjustment because you're going to be running the mid-range on its own amp channel and the tweeter on its own amp channel versus using one amp channel going through the passive crossover network. Uh, and going with this solution. Okay. So this is a great solution though, guys. We really spent a lot of time dialing in the sound uh, of this system using this passive crossover network. So for the guys that really want to tweak, biamping is great, but it's really not necessary to achieve good sound. Okay, and to go along with the passive crossover, I see we did choose to include some capacitors there. Why, why did we do that? Well, this is for the guy that may have an amplifier that doesn't have a high pass crossover built into it, which is pretty rare these days, or maybe his high pass crossover in his amplifier doesn't go to a high enough frequency. We really want to see about 400 hertz at 12 dB per octave uh, sent to these drivers. So this is actually an 800 hertz, 6 dB per octave cap, which is going to give you about the same protection in the event that you don't have a crossover. Uh, or a crossover that goes high enough in your amplifier. Or if you want to run them off of the head unit. A lot of times the head unit's not going to have a high pass crossover built into the speaker outputs. So you just add this bad boy in line and this will be sure to protect these two and a half inch mid-range drivers so that they don't play too low. Understood. So what if somebody doesn't have a high-end DSP, maybe a really nice amplifier with all kinds of uh, great crossover control, but yet they don't really want to use their head unit either. I see we do have this amplifier here um, how does that play with the tweeter box? Well, this is perfect because this is our four channel key amplifier. With the automatic DSP, you hit the button and you're ready to go. And the fact that this system here is bi ampable a separate amp channel for the tweeter and a separate amp channel for the mid, you just hit the button on the key amplifier, let it do all the dialing in for you, set an EQ, time delay, crossover points and everything, and you're ready to rock and roll. Speaking of mounting, how can you mount this in your car? You did mention the A-pillar and then of course the dash pad itself. Um, so how does this mount and what type of versatility does that mount give us? Well, the mount that I really like to go with is the A-pillar mount. I mean, that's what we really had in mind when we came up with this product. And the nice thing about it is, all you have to do is drill a hole for this stud right here. Pull your A-pillar off, which is typically very simple. Sometimes there's a couple of screws, sometimes there's not and it just pulls off. But you just drill a hole, install the product, put the nut on the back side and screw it in. And what's really cool about it is you can rotate this. So you can really dial in your angle to the listener and you can also clock the tweeter this way or that way, almost all the way around until it you know, butts up against this uh, portion of the mounting mechanism here. So you can actually, if you mount it to your pillar and it's sideways and you want to orient the tweeter on top of the product, you can do that. If you mount it to your dash, and you want to orient the tweeter on top, you just rotate it over. And you guys can hear the clicks, which means it's detented, and it's nice and easy to lock in, and it's going to be a good, solid, 
locked mount when you get it dialed in where you want it. And then you can tighten it down with a screw in the back, correct? Correct. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Aaron, for your time today. Thank you. All right, and if you guys want to learn more about these KS Tweeter Pods, make sure you check out kicker.com. <laughs>